Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, King Kong Consciousness, live and direct, National Heroes Park in Jamaica. Y'all know where I'm at right now. I am at the grave of the greatest human organizer of all time. I said I am at the grave of the greatest human organizer of all time, brothers and sisters. I am at the grave of the greatest black leader of the 20th century. I am at the grave of the only black man to lead a, la a mass movement of more than 13 million Africans without considering himself to be a god, without considering himself to be a prophet, without the exploitation of Christianity, Islam, Hebrewism, or any other religion. We're talking about none other, brothers and sisters. You know his name. You know his name. Let's say it with me. His Excellency, the provisional prophet and king of revolutionary pan-African nationalism, the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. I'm at the gravesite of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. This is my first time visiting the gravesite of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey since we purchased the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy in February of 2019. I said, I've been here before. This is my first time since we purchased the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy in Wilmington, Delaware on February the 7th of 2019, the centennial year of Marcus Garvey's founding of the Black Star Line Steamship corporation in the state of Delaware 100 years before. There are no coincidences. The Black Star Line was incorporated in Delaware in 1919 and we purchased the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy in 2019. Oh yes, brothers and sisters. It is Pan-Africanism a parish. Pan-Africanism is the only solution for African people. Oh yes, brothers and sisters. This is the Black Star that covers the gravesite of the greatest black organizer of all time. The greatest black leader of the 20th century. The greatest mass organizer the planet earth has ever seen Mussolini studied copied and plagiarized Garvey that's right Hitler studied copied and plagiarized Garvey all mass leaders studied copied and plagiarized Garvey it was Marcus Garvey who laid the ideological philosophical and practical foundation for the dismantleization of colonization and neo-colonization on the African continent it was Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah I said it was Sajifo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who attended school at Lincoln University right outside of Philadelphia. He attended the University of Pennsylvania inside of Philadelphia. And it was Osajifo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who said of all the books he read, of all the books he read, brothers and sisters, of all the books he read, he said the book written by this man, the philosophy and opinions of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey influenced Kwame Nkrumah more than any other book he ever read. And that's why there's a black star right now now there's a black star right now there's a black star right now on the flag of ghana to represent the black star line steamship corporation of the most honorable marcus messiah garvey that's right nanam diazikawe studied garveyism brothers and sisters when he attended lincoln university in pennsylvania jomo kenyatta said himself he used to go and listen to marcus garvey speak at the Hyde Park Speakers Corner in London, England, brothers and sisters. It was Marcus Garvey who was financing African independence struggles from London and in Jamaica after he was exiled from the United States based off of the petty false indictment of J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI. It was Marcus Garvey who was the first target of COINTELPRO before it was called COINTELPRO. It was Marcus Garvey who was the first target of the CIA before it was called the CIA. He was the first target of the FBI before it was called the FBI, brothers and sisters. It was Marcus Garvey that gave that forced the white man to come up with the Council on Foreign Relations to disrupt Pan-African plans all around the world. You can't talk about black leadership without talking about Garvey. Malcolm X, brothers and sisters, Malcolm X's father, Earl Little, rest in peace to Earl Little, his mother, Louise Little, the parents of Malcolm X, were organizers and activists, Pan-Africanists for the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. El Haj Malik El Shabazz was raised in a Garveyite home, brothers and sisters. Elijah Poole, who will become the honorable Elijah Muhammad, was a Garveyite and a founder of the UNIA and a corporal in the Marcus Garvey African Legionnaires, the military of the red, black, and green Garvey movement. Carlos Cook's brothers and sisters was a Garveyite. Stokely Carmichael influenced by the Garveyites. The honorable minister Louis Farrakhan influenced by the most honorable Marcus Garvey. You can't talk black leadership if you don't talk Garvey because Garvey was before all of them. Marcus Garvey was before all of them. 
Marcus Garvey was before all of them and all of them copied the wisdom and the power of the pan-Africanism and black organizational strength of none other than the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. There would have been no Black Panther Party without Marcus Garvey. There would have been no Republic of New Africa without Marcus Garvey. There wouldn't have been no African People Socialist Party without Marcus Garvey. Show me any organization preaching pan-Africanism and I'll show you the origin is this man right here. Garvey did not create pan-Africanism. He reinvented pan-Africanism. We know John Brown Rushworn from Jamaica was already preaching pan-Africanism. Martin Delaney was already preaching pan-Africanism. Henry Highland Garnett was already preaching pan-Africanism. Alexander Crummel was already preaching pan-Africanism. Edward Wilmot Blyden was already preaching pan-Africanism. But Garvey did for pan-Africanism what Michael Jordan did for basketball. He didn't create basketball. He reinvented basketball. Marcus Garvey didn't create pan-Africanism. He reinvented pan-Africanism, brothers and sisters. And I stand here as the prince of pan-Africanism under the under the bust of the king of pan-Africanism. That's right. You got the king and the prince together at the same time. I said you got the king and the prince together at the same time. The king of pan-Africanism and the prince of pan-Africanism. And we will win. Africa will be free. All African people will be liberated. From the Bahamas to Bermuda to St. Thomas, St. Croix, Jamaica, Haiti, Cuba, our Africans in the Dominican Republic, our Africans in Puerto Rico, Turks and Caicos, Guadeloupe, we're going to be free in Brazil. We're going to be free in Suriname. We're going to be free in South Africa. We're going to be free in Ghana, Nigeria, in Canada, in the, in the, in the UK, and all throughout Europe. African people will be free, brothers and sisters. African people will be free, brothers and sisters. African people will be free. This right here is the God of black leadership. This right here is the God of pan-Africanism. This right here is the God of black organizational strategy and power. No other leader we ever had before the internet, before the cell phone, before the airplane, Oh, yes, before the laptop, before the iPad, no other leader you can name has ever brought 13 million Africans together from all over the world waving one flag, red, black, and green. I said waving one flag, red, black, and green. I said waving one flag, red, black, and green. And from the four corners of the earth, more than any leader you have ever heard without the need for religion. I said without the need for religion. I said without the need for religion from all four corners of the earth, Marcus Mosiah Garvey stood up and said, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will and organize more black people than any leader you can think of put together, brothers and sisters. It's Pan-Africanism a parish. It's Pan-Africanism yesterday, Pan-Africanism today, and it's Pan-Africanism tomorrow. So as I leave the grave site of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, greatest black leader of the 20th century, greatest human organizer of all time, remember it was Ho Chi Minh. It was Ho Chi Minh of Vietnam. It was Ho Chi Minh of Vietnam who used to go to Marcus Garvey meetings and Ho Chi Minh studied the strategy of Marcus Garvey, took it back to Vietnam and liberated the Vietnamese people and beat the American military in war with the Vietnamese. He studied Garvey. Mao Zedong studied Garvey. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, brothers and sisters, they all studied Garvey. Whether they was white people, brown people, yellow people, red people, or black people, they all drunk from that great cup of Garvey and Garveyism, brothers and sisters. I said Garvey and Garveyism, so as I leave, I asked Marcus Garvey to bless us. I asked Marcus Garvey to give me the strength and the power to go back to America and finish erecting the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy in his honor. The Marcus Garvey Elementary School will open with the will of the Almighty. The Marcus Garvey Elementary School of the FDMG Academy will open with the will of the Almighty Kwanzaa Week 2023. Kwanzaa Week 2023, grand opening of the first school in American history built exclusively with the global African diaspora and dollar, brothers and sisters. From December the 26th to New Year's Day, we're going to celebrate Garveyism and we're going to celebrate all of you who have donated and stood by Marcus Garvey, the king of Pan-Africanism, and Dr. Ifa Tunde, the prince of Pan-Africanism. We're going to celebrate your continued support and and contributions to the re-education and the re-emancipation of the African mind, brothers and sisters. This is not a game. This is real life. This is not a game. This is real life. This is not sensationalism. This is revolution, brothers and sisters. Oh, yes. We are here at the grave of Marcus Garvey. I got to get ready to tune on out right now. I haven't been here in seven years, and this is the first visit since we purchased 
the Marcus Garvey Elementary School. So I had to come and tell the most honorable Marcus Garvey that his school is coming soon. I had to come and tell the most honorable Marcus Garvey face to face, the prince of Pan-Africanism and the king of Pan-Africanism face to face. I needed to come and tell Garvey that his school will be opening soon, that we will be having a grand opening this December. Pan-Africanism ain't never perished. Garveyism ain't never got back. I said Pan-Africanism ain't never perished and Garveyism ain't never got back. We just I'm at the grave of Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey, brothers and sisters. I'm at the grave site of Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey. This is the second wife. This is the second wife of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, brothers and sisters. Shout out to all my Jamaican Africans. I'm on the island with you. Shout out to all my Caribbean Africans. I'm in the ocean with you. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my continental Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Canadian Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my South American Africans, my Central American Africans, my Africans in Asia, Australia, my United States Africans. That's right. My Texas Africans, my New York City Africans. Yes, indeed. My California Africans, New York Africans, Jersey Africans. I'm at the grave site of Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you a little bit about Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey. This is the second wife of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. First of all, let us be clear about one thing. You would not know the works of the honorable Marcus Garvey had it not been for Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey. This is the woman who compiled the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey, volume one and two. Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey compiled the philosophy and opinions of the most honorable Marcus Garvey while he was in prison, brothers and sisters, in the Tombs prison in Atlanta, Georgia. Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey rushed and put together all the speeches and all the writings and all the letters and all the opinions of the honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, and she put that into a book, the gold book, the philosophy and opinions of the honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey to raise money for his trial, the trial that he should not ever have had to undergo due to the fake and false charges, the fraudulent charges put upon Marcus Garvey in the UNIA by none other than J. Edgar Hoover. That's right, none other than J. Edgar Hoover in the FBI. This was COINTELPRO before COINTELPRO. Remember, the first full-time black FBI agent was hired to infiltrate and take down the most honorable Marcus Garvey in the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. But it was this bold, this brave, this powerful black woman who put together the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. And then later on, she wrote Garvey and Garvey brothers and sisters if you haven't read Garvey and Garveyism then you don't know the story of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey and then after that she co-edited Marcus Garvey in the vision of Africa with our great grandmaster teacher ancestor Dr. John Henry Clark brothers and sisters and it was this black woman who wrote a letter to the fifth pan-african conference in Manchester England telling them to drop the use of the word Negro and start calling our people Africans I'm gonna say it again it was Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey who wrote a letter to the fifth pan African conference with W.E.B. Du Bois and Amy uh, uh, Ashwood Garvey and I believe that uh, Jomo Kenyatta and some of the early Pan-Africanist freedom fighters on the continent were at the 5th Manchester Conference in England and it was Queen Mother Amy Jakes who said we should no longer call our people Negroes, we must call them African. That the Marcus Garvey never wanted to call our people Negroes, he wanted to call them African but our people wasn't ready to be called African, they'd rather be called Negroes back then. Just like many of you now would rather be called Black been called African. This black woman right here, brothers and sisters, was powerful. She worked with many of the up-and-coming Pan-Africanist leaders in Africa and throughout the Caribbean. She was also a pioneering black womanist. I didn't say black feminist. I said black womanist. If you're a black feminist, you're following white women. If you're a black womanist, then you're following that sacred tradition of, of, of female African spirituality and energy. She was one of the main black female liberation writers of the of the of the 19th century of the 20th century excuse me amy jakes garvey used to write articles for the negro world she had her own corner in the negro world where she would express the issues that black women were facing please keep in mind that the honorable marcus garvey led the only movement of his time that viewed the woman as an organizational and revolutionary equal to the black man no other organization in garvey's day treated the black woman as an equal to the black man remember for every unia division you had a man president but you also had to have a Lady president. No other organization at that time or since then uh, mandates that there must be a lady president right next to the man president. And it was this black woman, Amy Jakes Garvey, who talked about the issues of black
black women. She's the one who led the way for black women in the Pan-African struggle. She demanded equality in the Pan-African struggle. And when the most honorable Marcus Garvey was in jail, it was Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey that helped keep the organization together. She was going around speaking. And according to some who heard her, they consider her one of the greatest black female orators of all time. I said she was considered one of the greatest black female orators of all time. And some even say that her oratorical prowess rivaled that of the Honorable Marcus Garvey himself. In fact, one time, Marcus Garvey was supposed to give a speech and he didn't let his wife, Queen Mother Amy J. Garvey, open up for him and the crowd begin to protest Marcus Garvey. I'm going to say it again. In New York City, Garvey opened up the speech without letting Queen Mother Amy J. Garvey open up for him and the crowd begin to protest Marcus Garvey and they demanded that they hear from Queen Mother Amy J. Garvey. This is the hidden story of black women in Pan-Africanism. This is the hidden story of our sisters in the revolution. So while I'm here in Jamaica, while I'm here in Kingston, I had to come and visit the grave of the wife, the woman who held down the movement and held down the memory of the man, the greatest black uh, leader of the 20th century, greatest human organizer of all time, and the only black man to lead a mass movement who didn't have to create a religion, use religion, or exploit religion. Marcus Garvey said, if you want to be a Muslim, go pray in the mosque. You want to be a Christian, go pray in the church. But when you come to the UNIA, when you come to the red, black, and green, we exist for one reason and one reason only, and that's for nation building, for the complete and total un qualified, unquestionable liberation and emancipation of African people, brothers and sisters. So I just needed to show y'all this and the red, black and green flag is waving right here, brothers and sisters. And this shrine was dedicated by the two sons of Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey and the Honorable Marcus Garvey, Dr. Julius Garvey, who died a few years ago. He joined the ancestors from Florida approximately two years ago. And Dr. Julius Garvey, who's a thoracic surgeon up in New York City to this day, at whose speech I was at the Delaware State HBCU, a couple months ago down in Delaware. So brothers and sisters, the struggle continues. Amy Jakes Garvey, we want you to know that we are here with you. Queen mother ancestor that the war not over. We need you to come and fight with us. You need you to come and stand with us. We need you to inspire us, to give us the vision, give us the mission and give us the power. Oh yes, brothers and sisters. I'm in the land of Samuel Sharp. I'm in the land of Paul Bogle. I'm in the land of John Brown Russworm. I'm in the land of Nanny of the Maroons, of Peter Tosh, of Bob Marley. Oh yes, I am in the land of Bookman. The initiator of the Haitian Revolution was a Jamaican African, brothers and sisters. I'm in the land of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Peace and Pan-Africanism. As you know, we just came from the grave of the second wife and the first lady of the Garvey movement. The Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey. We just tried to visit the grave of the Honorable Marcus Garvey's first wife and co-founder of the UNIA ACL, Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey. The first wife was Amy Ashwood Garvey. The second wife was Amy Jakes Garvey. But unfortunately to my Pan-Africans in the diaspora, unfortunately I must inform you, we cannot find the gravesite of Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey. A tombstone was never erected on her grave. We must do better, Pan-Africanists. We must do better preserving the memory and the sacred legacy of our ancestors. No gravesite here at Calvary Cemetery in Kingston. No gravesite, excuse me, no tombstone for us to identify the gravesite of Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey, co-founder of the largest black organization in modern history. Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey was one of the co-conveners of the Manchester Conference, the fifth Pan-African Conference that took place in Manchester, England. She also worked with George Padmore, CLR James. She went to Nigeria at the invitation of the first Prime Minister of Nigeria, Pan-Africanist Nanamdi Azikawe. She co-founded organizations for black empowerment and black women in London. Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey was in Liberia for three years, where she worked with William Tub Tubman, President William Tubman of Liberia, a kinsman to the great Queen Mother Harriet Tubman. Brothers and sisters, we cannot afford to lose the legacy of Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey. We may have to bring an expedition back here to Calvary Cemetery in Jamaica with some shovels and some rakes and let us dig up the whole cemetery until we find the grave of one of the most pioneering black female Pan-Africanists of all time, Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey. 
Brothers and sisters, are you willing to dig up the cemetery until we find the Queen Mother? We have to do this. We must do this. The grave sites of all great African ancestors must be found. They must be cleaned up. They must be honored. And we Pan-Africanists hold it a sacred right and obligation of ours to be the caretakers of the eternal resting sites of all of our great female and male Pan-African ancestors. So this is the Big Brother King Kong Consciousness signing off just to let you know, live from Kingston, Jamaica, we cannot find the grave site of Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey. We must do better. We just came from the grave of Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey. We just came from the grave of Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey. We just paid our respects to Paul Bogle and Samuel Sharp and George William Gordon, brothers and sisters, nanny of the Maroons, bookman of the Haitian Revolution, was from Jamaica. Oh, yes. Peace and Pan-Africanism to all my Jamaican Africans. I'll see y'all today at 2 o'clock, Trenchtown, Havana Plaza, 5 o'clock in Tivoli. Uh, what is it? Buppy Park, Tivoli, 5 p.m. This is the Prince if you need to reach me. Hit me on your WhatsApp, direct text, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858. And this is King Kong Consciousness, the Intercontinental e Tune Day, signing out from the grave of the greatest black leader of the 20th century, greatest human organizer of all time, the only black man in history who did not run a country to bring 13 million Africans together under one flag, one God, one aim, one destiny, up, 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 you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. The greatest weapon used against the Negro is disorganization. If the black man and woman are not careful, you are drinking all the poison of Western civilization and die from the effects of it. Peace and Pan-Africanism.